Uh, today was Corey's annual holiday sale. She has a big sale like this uh, the Saturday and Sunday after Thanksgiving every year. She used to have two or three a year uh, back before I knew her, but now just just this one. And it, it's a big event. Uh, she sent out about 700 postcards and people come. This is the, I think it's the fourth or fifth one I've been to. I come up from Arkansas for the sale every year. And then last two years I've gotten to participate. and. Uh, about seven o'clock this morning, we looked outside and there were already people standing at the door. Uh, the doors open at nine, and by eight o'clock, eight thirty, uh, there was a line down past the window, and farther than I could see. So it's a hugely anticipated event and and well attended. And then she opens the doors at nine o'clock, and people rush in. And usually by nine thirty or nine forty-five, everything's gone. <laughs> Just not much left. It's just a frenzy. Uh, but everyone is very well behaved. That's what happened today. We had three stations of people packing and adding and wrapping, and then probably about 10 o'clock, Corey will say there's nothing for us to do and we can all leave or go about our business. But uh, we're, we'll probably stick around all day. But I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, Fletcher and I. Or Potter's down here. And how do you know Clary? Um, Clary came and taught a workshop at the Arkansas Art Center Museum School in 2000 and 2004. Yeah, January 2004. And I was lucky enough to get to go to the workshop. Uh, and I, I read her book, and I was, had just uh, really meant something to me as a Potter. Uh, I never really thought. I knew I wanted to be a potter, but I, you know, you see people make the same pots over and over and over, and you think, I could never do that. And then when I saw what Query was doing, where she's just endless variation on form and having fun that way, I thought I could be a potter if I could do that. So anyway, we headed off at the workshop, and she kind of dropped a couple of hints that maybe I could come and work with her. And I was working full time in corporate America then, and it just seemed like, you know, I might as well be on the moon and go and work with Clary Olium. But somehow it happened. It was just like a miracle. And so the next summer I came up and I loaded up my car, and uh, I'd never been away from home that long. I stayed here for four months. I brought my cat, and I lived in that back room. Actually, that table that has the coffee on it, that was my bed. And uh, I had a mattress on it, but I, st <laughs> I stayed there and worked in that room and it was just every day I would look out that window and think I can't believe I'm here and uh, so that was how I got to know it and we got to be friends and I've come up every year since. I came up last year and we messed around with the earthenware a little bit. It was kind of fun and then I uh, wanted to come up this year but she was thinking about selling the property and didn't you know wasn't settled so it couldn't happen but you know maybe I hope I get to come work with her again. She's funny and she's smart and uh, she's goofy. And you know, there's this whole side of Corey people don't get to see. Of course, when I started, I was terrified. There's, uh, she's, I didn't want to let on how, how scared and intimidated I was. And I really wanted to learn to throw on a treadle wheel. So I started, I started that. And I'd been sitting behind a desk for 20 years and I just didn't have the stamina. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. It was, uh, I, it was like wanting to throw all over again, and, and a lot of that time I would, I, you know, it was mostly watching and absorbing and just the conversation. I mean, we spent, she worked in her studio and I worked in my studio, but we were always interacting and walking through, and, and it was a while before I was confident enough to ask her for a critique, but we talked about pots the whole time, I mean, Clary, I mean, although she certainly has other interests, she's, uh, very knowledgeable and and looks at parts and and just knows and I think I really learned to see not through her eyes but to appreciate with my own eyes what I was seeing and uh, so you know it was mostly that sometimes she would say why don't you try this uh, why don't you you know I was trying to make a lot of cylinders or cylindrical forms and she asked me to uh, you know, try get away from those cylinders and try and put some curves in there. And uh, yeah, I, I still 
heard a voice in my head saying, you know, why don't you try something here? And then, and then I know finally when I asked her to look at some pots I made that I was really proud of, she just tore them up. And just let me have it. And I never had a critique like that before. I didn't go to grad school. And, you know, I'd heard about people getting these vicious critiques and, um, Oh yeah, she said everything about, I, I was really proud of these parts. It was four lidded jars and she told me all these things that I could have done differently in ways I could have tied the beginnings and the endings of the parts together and just, you know, why, why doesn't this go with this and this proportion is wrong with this and this doesn't fit here and this doesn't even look like it was made by the same person and I mean it was just like, oh my god, ow. It was horrible and, and I just thought, the only one pot she liked was this one. It looked kind of like one of hers. And I was like, she just liked pots that look like hers. And um, so I pouted for a while and then I realized everything she said was dead on. It was, she was right. And it was probably one of the best things she ever did for me, even though I don't really respond to that kind of viciousness. Normally, I, <laughs> I'm glad she did it. And um, I'm glad we had that opportunity. And, uh, that was just wonderful. She made me a potter. <laughs>